If you're a coaster enthusiast, I'm sure you can tell me right off the top of your head what's your favorite style of restraint on a roller coaster. I would assume you might go with a less restrictive style, but you might prefer the types that are that like fully strap you down. But anyways, in this video, I'm going to be ranking different styles of restraints from worst to best. Let's get started. Number 10, Aerodynamics Traditional Over-the-Shoulder Restraints. These style of restraints are awful. I will actually debate riding a roller coaster that uses these restraints. First, they really don't fit me well. They are designed for shorter people. Also, if they do happen to fit somewhat, they end up crushing your shoulders before the ride is over. Two, as the stronger g-forces are thrusted against your body, these shoulder restraints will start to restrict even more, leaving you completely incapacitated. It can be claustrophobic to some folks, which I can understand why. These restraints also leave you with no room for your arms. I don't know what to do with my arms while riding an aero coaster, so I just hold on to the handle, if it even has one. Not all of them do. One positive thing I will say about these style restraints is that a larger guest will have a better chance of not doing a walk of shame. The shoulder bars don't have to come all the way down. In fact, when I ride, only the shoulder bar touches, like, touches me. The rest of my body is completely unrestricted. Number 9, Flying Dutchman Straps. The style of restraints found on a Flying Dutchman coaster is a mix between a lap bar and shoulder restraints. The lap bar is fine, I don't have a problem with them, but the vest strap is my issue with this style. And for one main reason, feeling secure. The way you're laying down when the train flips you onto your stomach, all of your body weight is sent into your shoulders, and the flimsy feeling straps doesn't seem secure to me, which hindered me from enjoying Firehawk as much as I should have. Yes, I know the straps are safe, but a better version would have allowed me to enjoy the roller coaster so much more. Number 8, Classic Arrow Mine Train Lap Bar. Some of you might be scratching your heads as to why I would hate these type of lap bars. Well, I will tell you. It's because I can barely fit my legs underneath them. Because of my height, I'm 6'3", in case you're wondering. But yeah, I usually have to cross my legs and stuff them underneath the seat. I still end up scraping the bar against my knees until I get into the proper place. If I was shorter, I would be completely indifferent to the style of a restraint. But for myself, these things are awful. They actually almost stopped me from riding a roller coaster once or twice before because, well, I just could figure out how to get my legs to fit underneath the restraints. But I was shown the technique of how to cross your legs and stuff them backward. But anyways, not a fan. Number seven, B&M vest restraints on dive coasters. So I'm actually a fan of the vest restraints on an inverted flying or wing coaster. But when you put them on a dive machine, it basically ruins the whole experience. All the airtime that you would experience during that stunning 90 degree drop is completely removed because the vest restraints got you so secured, you're not moving anywhere. My wife is actually a personal fan of these restraints, mostly because of how secure they make you feel. I can understand that. Number six, Intamin vest restraints, hard shoulder restraints. For a spell, Intamin started to make all of their new roller coasters, regardless if it had inversions or not, to have shoulder restraints. There are two flavors of the style. One is the traditional hard plastic restraint. It's kind of actually, it's a little flexible, but it's like a rubbery whatever. But anyways, it sits out in front of your shoulders. So if you're not tall enough, expect some head banging because your head's just going to sit right in between these things. The vest restraints or the soft strap restraints fix the issue of the head banging, but at the price of mobility. The vest restraints hinder you from experiencing better floater and ejector airtime it doesn't take it all away, not kind of like how the vest restraints do, but it does hinder it somewhat. I'm a personal fan of the vest restraint style, like the soft ones versus the hard ones. I mean, it's not like a huge difference for me. Number five, Intamin Skyrush style restraints. Skyrush has been dubbed Thigh Crush, and for one good reason, the restraints. The restraints are technically a lap bar, but almost look like over-the-shoulder restraints, for the most part, I'm actually okay with these style of restraints, except for one thing. An unfortunate feature of these type of restraints is that they will continue to get tighter throughout the ride. Sky Rush is super intense ride, arguably one of the most intense coasters in the world. So when you make it to the brake run, all those G-forces have now clamped down on your restraints so tight as they can possibly go. 
The manufacturer wisely created a slight release of the restraints while you're waiting on the brake run. That way you don't lose all the feeling in your legs. Number four, B&M clamshell restraints. These weird alien looking lap bars are quite comfortable. In fact, one of the best style of lap bars out there. They can be somewhat restrictive depending on how hard you push down on them when you're buckling yourself in, but for the most part, they allow you to have a good ride experience. They let you feel exposed and open, but at the same time secure. These style of restraints can get tighter as you ride, but it, it's something that you can sort of prevent depending on how you are seated. Obviously, you should never stop a roller coaster restraint from doing its proper job. Number 3. Rocky Mountain Construction Lap Bar Originally, RMC used Gerstlauer trains, but now they use their own trains. Both have very similar restraints, but I prefer the ones made by RMC. The restraints on Iron Rattler can start to get tighter throughout the ride, but not that much though. The restraints on Steel Vengeance feel like they will be very restricting of airtime, but that obviously proves to be false. Some don't like the shin guards on these style of restraints, but I don't mind them. Overall, they're, they're comfortable lap bars that make you feel exposed, but at the same time secure. Number 2. Morgan Hyper Coaster Restraints These type of restraints found on Phantom's Revenge is one of the best style of restraints of airtime. The physical lap bar doesn't come completely down against your body, allowing you to rise out of your seat during the intense airtime moments. These styles do feature a seatbelt as well, but you hardly notice them there. Steel Eel has the same style of restraints, and both of these coasters will send you flying out of your seat. Some might not like these style of restraints because of how unrestricted they are, but rest assured you're safely secured in that coaster train. Number 1. Buzzer Bar No Seatbelt If you've been on Phoenix over at Knobles, you will notice that the ride only has a buzzer bar, that comes down to your chest level. It doesn't come in contact with your body at all. Also, you have no seatbelt, meaning the only thing keeping you in your seat is that buzzer bar, but it's really actually not keeping you in your seat. On Phoenix, you'll find yourself flying out of your seat and smacking against that buzzer bar on multiple occasions. It can be rather unnerving, but it's the airtime fanatic's best dream. Well, that's my top 10 restraints from worst to best. It's kind of a weird list, but yeah, sorry I didn't get to every style of restraint. There is a ton of multiple styles. Honestly, most of them are just a like slight rendition of other versions. I never made it to the traditional T-bar restraints that Intamin used to use, which they were actually pretty good, um, especially the versions on Millennium Force and Top Thrill Dragster. Obviously, the restraints on Top Thrill Dragster are so much better than King Ka. Anyways, they're pretty similar to the RMC lap bar, so I was kind of using that as my guess. I didn't also talk more about the B&M vest restraints because I, I sort of mentioned how I didn't like them, but that was only on the dive coasters. But I really like the vest restraints on Banshee. I think that's very comfortable. There's no head banging, which is great for a roller coaster that features lots of inversions. I know some people have an issue with the vest restraints on a wing coaster. They do hinder the airtime, especially uh, you can notice it on Gatekeeper. That airtime hill, yeah, there's like no air on that airtime hill. But anyways, yeah, the vest restraints overall, I, I like them. They make you feel nice and secure no head banging. They're, they're pretty comfortable all around. So what's your favorite roller coaster restraint? Let me know in the comments. As always, please subscribe. That way you won't miss more great content coming your way by me, X-Screen Thrills.